movieweb.com. Everything around her begins to vanish. Now, she's alone in the darkness. So my first question is, do you guys actually believe in ghosts? Have you ever seen any? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I don't believe in ghosts, but I, I'm very respectful to them. You know, I, I, I'm, afraid, I'm afraid of them. But uh, it's hard to believe in ghosts for me. But he, ha he got some experience preparing right. the movie. It's a long, long story. <laughs> we don't have time for that. <laughs> but yes, I have seen a ghost, and I'm very, re and uh, I do believe in the other side. Absolutely. Well, I'm wondering, do you have this character Thomas or Tomas, as mm -hmm. you say? Yeah. And he's deformed in life, and when he dies, he goes to the other side, and he's still deformed. And I'm wondering, don't you think that kind of destroys the hope in death that some people have? that they're going to be better released from this body, but then this kid comes back and he's still deformed. I think that was interesting. Well, one of the things that um, there is in the end is that you can find beauty in all these evil aspects or these uh, um, ideas of what is evil or not. So I thought that put that uh, child with his face uh, in a perfect situation would have been like not to accept him like it is, you know? And also, in a way, the, the kid, uh, I think uh, the redeeming aspect of that is that the kid gets to, has to, in real life, he has to wear a mask. And uh, in the other world, it's like he's freed from that uh, constraint, you know, and, and, and he's finally able to be himself. But, um, I mean, he's a sweet kid. Why would he have to be beautiful? That would be like the Beauty and the Beast thing. It's like, no, yeah. you don't have to be beautiful to be nice. That's one of the things <laughs> I don't understand from the, from the ending of Beauty and the Beast. Because uh, she fell in love from the beast. Why the beast is turning in this kind of prince? <laughs> I don't know how to say that. <laughs> well, this isn't a diss on you guys. It's just that in the seventies, like one of the jump scares was the black cat jumping out in the middle of the quietness. And all of a sudden, I've seen like the last week, I saw five movies where a car comes out and hits somebody as a jump scare. I'm wondering why, as director and writer. Do you think that's the go-to scare nowadays, is to have this car come out and hit somebody? I, I'm not, because you guys do it great, and mm -hmm. you have a great scare after that, but I'm just wondering why do you think that's so prevalent? Yeah, you right? know, I, I wonder why how many of these uh, sequences that you're talking about really worked. Because what we try to do is like to create an effectiveness in the audience. And I think that what we have seen right now is that the moment really works with the audience. Because we try to focus in simplicity, not in and uh, I think nowadays there is like a trend of using too many elements, like focusing the excessive, you know? And we try to put these scary moments uh, in a very calculated way. And it, I think it really worked. Oh, well, I think it really works too. Mm -hmm. I wasn't complaining about the way it's, but see, you, you have a very effective one. And another movie I've seen is not so effective, but mm -hmm. the, they're using it so much that it takes the effectiveness away. And that's somebody who has an effective scene. Yeah. Do, you, do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. So I'm just wondering why that's so popular now to go f to that. Ever since Joe Black, that's just become like a... I don't know. Scare. Actually, that uh, we, we had uh, that idea. Well, th there were several possibilities on how to get rid of Benigna. <laughs> and uh, accidentally, we were watching Bitter Moon by the Roman Polanski film. And there's this one scene where Peter Coyote gets out of a cab and he's completely drunk. And out of nowhere comes this bus and hits him. And that's where we thought, oh my god, that we could do something like that in our movie. And then I remember watching the remake of Dawn of the Dead. Once <laughs> yeah. we had already yeah, done that, I was like, yeah. oh my god, that's just the same. So I don't know. I couldn't answer why, but it's okay. there. One real quick last question. Are you guys involved in the American remake, and how is that going to be different? And uh, Not really. You know, it's like uh, Guillermo, he's a very generous man, and he offered me to direct it. Uh, but I declined because for me it's uh, like kind of weird to do the, the same movie twice. But I know that Guillermo is involved in the story, and you know Guillermo, he's a very smart guy. So probably it's not going to do the same. It's not going to do the same movie made in English by American by, by American director. I think he, he wants to put the story in, in a different level and try to do like a, like a rewrite of the story in a different way. Four, three, two, 
One. You can open your eyes.